So this is a kind of a TLDR video. I'm going to try to make this really short and there's an accompanying blog post that is basically going to give you all of the citations, the math, the information uh, that goes along with this. So I encourage you before you comment or anything like that, go and look at the blog post. It will be linked down below. All the citations are in there. I'm not going to put them uh, in the notes down below or anything like that. So what we're going to talk about is kind of our standard for picking sparring gloves. Now the gold standard for a long time has been 16 ounce sparring gloves with about two inches of padding. You know, it's never exact and depending on, you know, what size hand you have and all that, that changes some things. But the big reason that these are the gold standard is that that extra padding, uh, it spreads out the surface area of the hit, making the pounds per square inch. Uh, a little bit lighter, although that's a bit of a red herring. Um, and more so, it affords you an ability to put some of that padding on there to decelerate the hit before it makes full impact, which bleeds off a lot of the energy um, so that it, it makes it uh, more sustainable over the long run. Now the problem with that is that the even though that works for safety, there are better options. We'll get to that in a second. And the, the bigger one is those are 16 ounces. Like competition boxing gloves, it, it ranges from um, you know from sport to sport. Like doing Muay Thai, doing Savat, doing Sandat, doing pro boxing, amateur boxing. It's all going to vary. But none of them use 16 ounce gloves in competition. And uh, we have some evidence that you have about a 20% margin on either side of uh, the weight of the implement that you use, you know, plus or minus 20% that allows you to kind of keep the motor pattern and train that specific motor pattern, which you, it starts changing the motor pattern the heavier you get or the lighter you get, your body compensates in different ways. And as far as your nervous system is concerned, it basically is a new skill. And of course there's carryover, right? Of course there's carryover, um, but it's not as exact as we would like it to be. And so uh, what we have to look at then is, is there a way to be just as safe or safer with something that is closer to the actual weight of the implement that we're working on? Uh, now again, we can go 20% above that weight as a rule of thumb uh, and still be working the same motor pattern you know, so, uh, you know, for a, a 10 ounce glove, which is a like standard heavyweight boxing glove, you could go up to a 12 ounce for, uh, you know, for sparring. Now, the funny thing is when you do the math out um, for 16 ounce versus 12 ounce, because 12 ounces typically only have like an inch and a half of padding, or 16s have about two inches. Um, that reduction in the padding does compensate for the uh, uh, for the change in uh, uh, the weight and the padding reduction compensate for each other, and it ends up about the same in in total force delivered. Yeah, the twelve you know tends to be a slightly smaller glove. You're going to get a bigger you know psi rating, um, but you're talking such a minuscule difference in surface area that it's really not worth quibbling about, that the surface area argument is kind of a red herring. Um, turns out, when you do the math out, these right here, your standard MMA gloves, now I've altered these a little bit, I took the wrist wraps off, I don't need the wrist wraps, and um, it takes actually about an ounce off each glove, so it makes a standard five ounce glove into a four ounce glove. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of weight savings on that. And so even with the three quarter inch padding on these, these actually hit about 20% less hard uh, than 16 or 12 ounce boxing gloves do. And, you know, so if you're not in boxing sport itself where you're going to be wearing boxing gloves, then these are just as safe, if not actually safer than the boxing gloves. Now yes, the pounds per square inch do go up because these have a much smaller profile, but again, it's not near as scary as it sounds because the surface area difference is not much at all. It's really not much at all of a difference in the surface area. 
So not worth quibbling about because the total force delivered is actually that 20% lower, it makes up for the difference in surface area tension. But theoretically, we do have better options than that. Now, if you're an MMA fighter, or you're fighting in a competition that uses MMA style gloves, five ounces, right? Now that's the same as uh, competition baseball, which this aforementioned study was doing, which basically means that your 20% above and below is one ounce. Well, it turns out that competition MMA gloves under the unified rules are mandated to be four to six ounces. So they actually manage that 20% uh, in the rules, if your standard is five, you know, obviously smaller gloves for smaller people are going to tend towards four, and bigger gloves can tend upwards of six, and theoretically can be a touch over six. Um, clearly, if the ounces ounces go up and the padding doesn't, then you know the heavier glove is more dangerous. It's going to deliver more force uh, because it doesn't have the extra padding to compensate. But for training. We do have some cool options. Now, the next options I'm gonna show you are above that 20% threshold. So, not as exact as we would like, but far, far better than a 16 ounce boxing glove or even a 12 ounce boxing glove. It, you know, kind of halfway between the MMA glove and the boxing glove. And so it's gonna be closer to your moving pattern even though it's not gonna be exact. The safest ones that we have on the market are kind of these eight ounce with two inches of padding. Um, these by far hit the least hard. They're half the weight of a 16 ounce boxing glove, literally half the weight with the same thickness of padding. Yeah, the PSI rating of course is gonna go up a little bit because you're talking again about a smaller profile, but it doesn't seem to matter all that much and again, if you're in MMA, MMA type sport, or if you're, you know, if you're training for, you know, self-defense and you just need a safe glove to spar with, these are still open hand where you can do a lot of your grappling. Um, not all of it, the, the thickness does get in the way, but you can do quite a bit more than you can with boxing gloves. So these are a much, much better option than wearing 16 ounce boxing gloves, which you just don't need unless you were practicing for the specificity specificity of your sport. Seven inch ones, the, the seven inch ones that I have access to tend to only be inch and a half thick, not, uh, not full two inches, um, but they come in pretty close and still significantly under the uh, 16 ounce boxing glove or the 12 ounce boxing glove as far as force production. Um, and Again, that one more ounce closer, it's getting to that, that six ounce threshold. You know, these are sevens, but that's only one ounce off as opposed to being, you know, so it's a 40% difference instead of a, you know, 60% difference. Which, again, getting closer, your movement pattern is going to be closer. There's going to be more carryover. Um, so these are actually theoretically just a little better, even though the other ones are safer if you're looking at total force output. These are going to be closer to your movement pattern by a touch, um, and they're still plenty safe, and they still hit way less hard than a 16 or a 12. Then we have kind of your modern MMA glove that has the thumb loop and all that. I'm not a big fan, um, but these, they're only four ounce, so this is a large. Um, now, my MMA gloves are an extra large, uh, and there does seem to be about a half inch-ish difference between the sizes uh, width-wise. So, uh, you know, the, the profile is going to be a, a little bit different from one to one, you know. So if uh, you have a four ounce and a five ounce with the same uh, PSI, uh, the same profile, then the PSI rating is going to be, you know, proportional and all that. But again, one ounce savings is going to hit a little bit lighter. So again, these, I cut the straps off because I don't need the straps. Makes them about four ounces, makes them just as good as these. Uh, these do have the wrist straps, so if you feel you need them, these are fine. And what's nice about these is because the wrist strap is short, um, 
they don't wrap your wrist so tightly, so it allows you some of the wrist mobility that you might need if you're not just trying to cast your hand and if you want to do you know, some of the cool stuff that we do in, in Kung Fu and some of the stuff you see in karate styles and whatnot, um, where you do need wrist mobility. So there's some cool stuff in there. Now, one thing you'll notice on these, and this is important to notice, there's this extra lump of padding up here. This is an inch and a quarter thick. This is a great idea, but we have a problem. It's not actually where my knuckles are. When I hit you, that bulge is not what's making contact. You're still getting hit with the three quarter. You're not actually getting hit with the inch and a quarter. If they had moved this inch and a quarter down to the actual striking surface, you know, I mean, they, even if they tapered just a little bit off of here, but they made this, this ramp up over the fingers and up to about here, where the bulge was here across the knuckles, then these would actually be safer and better off than even those eight ounces with the uh, two inch padding. And of course, that tracks mathematically because half the weight, four ounces versus eight, but more than half the padding. So the compensation is, is huge there. So good idea, bad execution, move that lump down closer to the fingers, you're going to have something a little bit closer. Even if you just bumped it up to an inch, it would end up being about the same, you know, because then you're talking half and half. Um, it would end up being about the same as the eight ounces. And these actually have about the same striking profile as those eight ounces do. And these are the actual weight of the sparring implement. So, the right glove for safe sparring isn't really even on the market yet, but about as good as you can get if you want to be really close. Seven ounces with an uh, inch and a half padding, the eight ounces with two inch padding are great. Um, actual MMA gloves are not unsafe at all, it, not if we're using the 16 ounce and 12 ounce uh, gloves as a standard. They're not unsafe at all because they, they just produce less force. and. The uh, you know four ounces. If we could just move that that lump of padding down to the actual striking surface, they would be even better. So uh, I'm going to let you guys go there. That went on longer than I thought it would, but I wanted to throw that out there at you guys. If you're not competing in a sport that requires boxing gloves, there's just not a good reason to be wearing the boxing gloves in your sparring. It it's not not a particularly useful thing. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to get out of here and I will talk to you guys later. Check the blog out, links below, buy a shirt, all that extra stuff. Good journey.